Okay, so let's uh, start the chapter on time value of money. The first thing I'll explain is the core concept behind time value of money, which I hope you've seen before, but just to make sure everybody is on the same page. This is what I generally call the second most important rule in finance, which begs the question, what's the most important rule in finance? Anybody? No, money is not a rule. Okay, <laughs> money money is a good thing to have, but it's not a rule. Okay, so the first, just in general, since this is a finance class, the most basic rule of finance is that you buy low, sell high. Okay, so if you can do that well, then you will make money, which is a good thing according to finance theory, at least. Okay, so the first rule is buy low, sell high. But in this particular class, we will not spend too much on the buy low, sell high. That is other concepts. If, if we have a course on, say, investments, there that rule keeps coming in. But here the rule that we'll focus on most is the rule on time value of money. What does time value of money? Intuitively, I'm sure you know this. If I tell you that right now at time t, t equal to zero, so t equal to zero generally means right now, okay? I give you $100 and I say, would you prefer this or if one year later at time t equal to 1, I give you $100, okay? What do you prefer? You prefer $100 right now, so you value the 100 right now. So clearly, even though it's $100 today and $100 one year later, there is some value associated with time. Having money now is better. What's the intuition behind that? There are several ways of thinking about it. If you have $100 right now, you can invest the $100. You can, let's say that you are a little savvy and in the Pakistan market, you can invest money in what's called T-bills. T-bills are government securities, government bonds. So if you are smart enough, you can work through your bank and set up an account where you buy T-bills. And in Pakistan, on T-bills, you can get a 12% return without any risk. So that means that by investing the $100 at time T equal to 1, that $100 will become 112. So, so really, effectively, $100 today for you is like having $112 one year from today. So with this very basic point, now you can compare money between two points in time. So do you prefer 100 today or $110 one year from today? You will prefer 100 today because in one year's time that 100 can become 112 without any risk. Okay, because with the T-bill, you are getting a 12% return without any risk. So this is the core concept of time value of money that you can take time, take money at some point in time and using a rate, which we will generally call the interest rate, sometimes we'll call it a discount rate for reasons that I will get into shortly. So if we say the interest rate is 12%, then we can say that $100 today is equivalent to $112 one year from today. And then you can keep doing the maths. In two years, what will that become? In two years, it will become 112 and then another 12% on top of 112, okay? So a little more than $124 in two years time. So that is the core concept, which I hope you have seen before. Okay, now something that again, you've probably seen before, but what you should become very comfortable with because it's used <coughs> over and over is the concept of a timeline. So whenever you have cash flows and you are trying to figure out solve a problem involving cash flows, the first thing I want you to do is draw a timeline. Okay, the convention for a timeline is time zero refers to now. So what does this one refer to? Yeah, this is at the end of year one. Is the end of year one the same as the start of year two? Yeah, the, exactly. So when you see one, that's the end of year one. Sometimes if it is referred to as the beginning of the second year, that's the same thing because if this is the second year, that's the beginning of the second year, that's also the end of the first year, so those two terms are synonymous. So that's the end of the second year, end of the third year, and so on. Okay, so 
that's your very basic timeline now just to do a very quick exercise so if I tell you that you are getting a hundred dollar lump sum in two years okay uh, how would you how would you draw that so you would simply create your timeline time zero time one time two and you would have your hundred dollars at the end of two years now a three year hundred dollar ordinary annuity have you seen this before in IBF so what's an annuity your yeah, annuity is a series of equal cash flows at equal intervals okay so how would you draw uh, how would you draw the annuity so here it's a three year ordinary annuity as opposed to annuity due I'll talk about that distinction later so here we are saying that the payment of hundred is for three years so period one two three and you get hundred dollars at the end of year one hundred dollars at the end of year two and hundred at the end of year three so this is a three year ordinary annuity okay now this is really basic but we'll build on these concepts very shortly what I just talked about was a uh, annuity which has even cash flows very often in finance you have cash flows that are uneven different cash flows at different points in time so if you have this cash flow how will you model this okay so again you have time zero time one time two time three so CF zero minus 50 the plus minus convention generally is if money is going out from you leaving you it's minus if money is coming to you it's plus so we might have so the way we can show this is minus 50 and then 175 and 50 okay so this is how you model a simple uneven cash flow okay now let's take the discussion further so we we have a consistent way of using timelines and while there are many ways to draw a timeline I'll just encourage you to keep the convention which I just talked about which is you put the period number above and you put the cash flow below the advantage of that is all the calculations that you can then do are below in general in life and in academics if you have a good convention and stick to it it just makes things work better okay so now we are going to talk about this concept of future value what is the future value of an initial hundred dollar investment after three years so what are we talking about here so we are saying at time zero we make an investment of hundred so effectively we've put in hundred and then the question is at the end of year three how much will this be assume a interest rate of 10 percent now the value of this hundred after three years is referred to as the future value at time three what does this three mean yeah three means future value at the end of year three okay not the start of year three the end of year three so what is that future value that future value is the hundred into one plus the interest rate to the power of number of periods which in our case is hundred into one plus the interest rate ten percent is point same as point one we use decimals here to the power of three okay I hope everybody is clear about this all we are doing is compound interest here the the hundred grows by ten percent and becomes hundred and ten and then this grows by 10 percent so it's 110 into 1.1 and then this again is 100 in 110 into 1.1 into 1.1 so effectively we have 100 into 1.1 cube okay so so this is a simple future value calculation okay just as a side remark this this comment that I have made over here uh, the future value can be solved by using the arithmetic financial calculator and spreadsheet methods okay I in general the use of financial calculators is 
discouraged here but i personally think that if you want to get a financial calculator and use it go for it i don't have any issues with that though i will generally not set any papers that require you to use one but if you have one and can use it that's good for you okay the the future value calculation we just did was a arithmetic method how would you use a financial calculator very briefly in a financial calculator you just plug in the numbers so you would simply plug in that the present value is 100 you would plug in that this is for three periods you would plug in a interest rate of 10% and then the calculator would give you the future value okay so that would be very quick but obviously to use the calculator you need to understand the concept okay the spreadsheet method which you will learn is on the spreadsheet also you can simply use the 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 spreadsheet has a present value future value functions plus you can simply do the calculation in excel so you will learn how to do this when you do the spreadsheet problem in case you don't already know okay how will you do a future value with multiple cash flow so let's say that uh, at time 0 you invest 100 at time 1 you invest 50 and then at time 2 you invest 30 how much will this amount become so that's a 3 this is 4 and 5 so if you are investing this money how much will you have at the end of year 5 how would you do this so you compound all of them individually okay what's the first additional piece of information that you need yeah the first thing that you need is the let's say that the interest rate is 10% so to come up with how much money you have at the end of year 5 uh, what do you do you take each number so you take the 30 so how much does 30 become at the end of year 5 yeah 30 into 1.1 to the power of 3 okay how many people think it is 5 uh, Okay, if you the thirty dollars that you put in the bank over here is going to sit in the bank for how long? Three One years. year, two year, three years. So that's compounding for three years. So you do thirty into one point one cube. Okay, what about the fifty? So the fifty is fifty into one point one to the power of four, and this would be a uh, hundred into one point one to the power of five. So you have three numbers. you add them up and that is your your future value at the end of year 5 okay so fairly straightforward okay now now let's talk about the opposite of future value which is present value so what's the present value of 100 dollars due in 3 years using a interest rate of 10% so all we are doing here is now we are doing something called discounting earlier we have been compounding so what's the opposite of compounding discounting. yeah the opposite of compounding is discounting so again you create your simple timeline at the end of year 3 let's say somebody promises you that i will give you 100 dollars at the end of year 3 what is that equivalent to in present value terms or what's this 100 dollar equal to right now okay the way you can think about this is those who have some basic algebra knowledge let's say that right now you have x okay how will this x become 100 given a rate of 10% so you would do x into 1.1 to the power of 3 is equal to 100 so then x must be 100 over 1.1 to the power of 3 so that what is x x is the present value of that 100 so effectively what you can say is that the present value at time 0 which is right here is equal to that time 100 is the future value at time 3 
over 1 plus the interest rate to the power of n. So what we have simply done is derive the present value formula. So to get the present value, you see how much money you have at a later point in time. So you have 100 divided by 1 plus, in our example, the interest rate is 10%, which is 0 0.1, raised to the power of um, the number of periods after which you are getting the money, which is 3. So you do the calculation and you will get your money. So what's the benefit of this? If somebody says to you, would you, can somebody do this for me very fast? So this is 62. Okay. Okay. So if somebody says to you that I will either give you $60 today or $100 after three years, now you know what is better. So $100 after three years is better than $60 today. What about what is not so intuitive is uh, what about $65 today versus $100 in three years, right? So this seems like this would not be obvious to 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 anyone that $65 today is better than $100 after three years. Okay, why? Because the other way of looking at it is if you invest the $65 today, what's the future value of that $65? It will be more than 100. And this brings us to another point where to compare two numbers or two cash flows, you should bring both those cash flows to the same point in time. So you can't compare 65 today with 103 years from today that easily. So what do you do? You bring the 100 back to time 0. So the 100 at the end of year 3 is equal to 62.9 today. So now you can compare the 62.9 at time 0 with 65 at time 0. Trying to compare 100 at time 0 with, let's say, or trying to compare 100 at time 3 with 65 at time 0 is like comparing apples to oranges. So effectively what we are doing is making a small transformation, bringing everything to time 0. Can you now compare is 100 at time 3 better or is 90 at time 2 better? Okay, somebody needs to work on their basic calculation. So I am just informed that it's not 62.9, it is? 75.13. Okay, so uh, I, okay, I, unfortunately I can't do this in my head, but to be honest, I think the 75 answer actually looks more plausible yeah so I'll just believe that for now okay so just rewind everything that I have said so effectively then hundred dollars after so who, who, who gave me the 62.9 answer okay. okay so you are on my list of people not to get answers from now okay so uh, 60 so so anyway I think you understood the concept okay so all right Okay, so now what is the, so finding the present value of a cash flow, a series of cash flows when compound interest is applied is called discounting. It's the opposite of, uh, of compounding. Okay, the present value shows the value of cash flows in terms of today's purchasing power. Okay, so an ordinary annuity, we've already defined an ordinary annuity where Let's say you have uh, payments of 100 for, uh, for 3 years. Okay, so what does that mean? So time 0, 1, 2, 3. How do you come up with the present value of this annuity? What's the, a brute force or a tough way of doing this? The, the simple way of doing this is to take every cash flow and come up with the present value. Okay, so what's the present value of this 100? So this would be 100 over 1.1. Then you take the present value of the next 100. This would be 100 over 1.1 squared. And this guy will be 100 over 1.1 cubed. So you then, you then simply add these three. 
and that will give you the present value at time 0 of a ordinary annuity okay so this is one way of doing an ordinary annuity there are other ways too on a financial calculator you can plug in you can plug in that this ordinary annuity has three payments you can specify that each payment is 100 you can specify a uh, interest rate of 10 percent and then the calculator will just calculate the present value for you okay if you use a calculator this will be helpful if not don't worry about it okay actually if you do decide to use a calculator on my website there is a whole tutorial on how to use a financial calculator okay so you can also and something that you must do you will also do this on excel okay so on excel you can just plug in the numbers and i'm sure within if you don't know how to do this already within the next few weeks you'll become experts at this all right the present value of an ordinary annuity we have just uh, talked about just to just to do this exercise real quick and uh, some of you are falling asleep so i am going to make sure you you wake up okay so you have let's say four cash flows of 200 each and let's say that the interest rate is zero what's the present value of this annuity okay. so the present value of this would be 800 because you are discounting discounting at zero would mean what yeah so the present value and future values would be the same but it's hard to find a place maybe in Japan to some extent this is true but in general interest rates are not zero okay with interest rate equals to 10 percent I want you to calculate the present value of this annuity so do it right now and I will see actually so Sunil you check this side I check this side you know I want to see there are five or six people who are answering I want to see whether the rest of the team All right, so I think the answer is about uh, so the present value. So all, all you needed to do here was discount each one of these back. So this becomes 200 over 1.1 1 .1 plus 200 over 1.1 1 .1 squared, 200 over 1.1 1 .1 cubed, and this becomes a 200 over 1.1 1 .1 to the power of 4. And add all these, and you get what? 630.97. All right, so I trust since most of you have gotten this, this is the correct answer. Okay, how do you come up with the future value of an annuity? Okay, so let's take that same annuity. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Again, you need an interest rate of 10%. So 100. 100 100 and 100 so if i ask you what's the future value at time 4 okay what would you do so you would take you you would now compound okay so how much you can take each individual cash flow and compound it so what would the first 100 become so it would become 100 into 1.1 to the power of three because we are moving forward three periods and then the next one will become so this would become 100 into so how what will this be 1 .1 square. exactly so 1.1 squared and what about this guy into okay so this would this is this this is just sitting in the bank for one year so the bank is only going to give you 10% on that okay so so this would be 100 into 1.1 1 .1, that's it what about this 100 that would remain 100 okay so and then so the last 100 is simply 100 you take these four numbers and you add them and that will give you the future value so what is the simple application of this 
the simple application is if you say that i am going to save 100 dollars every year for 4 years and those 100 dollars i'll put in the bank at the end of the year you can use this calculation to figure out how much money you will have at the end of 4 years okay so that's the very simple application of the future value okay now you you did you study annuities versus annuity due yes. okay annuity due is is effectively an annuity where the payment is made at the beginning of a year okay so if i take something like this 0 1 2 3 if you make a payment of 100 dollars at the start of the year this is a annuity due what is the typical application of a annuity due very often with lease contracts so if you are leasing some equipment or leasing a car the first payment that you typically make is at the start of the first period okay so when you have equal payments at equal intervals where the first payment is being made at time 0 then this is called a annuity due now there are formulas for finding the pv and fe but i am not big on formulas i just want to make sure you understand the intuition after that you in the real world will not be using formulas you will be using computers and spreadsheets and so on so <coughs> understanding the intuition is critical and understanding how to use the software is is as critical okay so how would you find the present value here what's the present value of this so interest rate is 10% so what do you do your name shahama so what would you do how would you figure out the present value of this annuity due i think um, as in uh, based on based on what we have studied so far actually do this i want to see how many people can do this based on uh, you know unless you have short term memory issues based on what we have just discussed you should be able to do this so what's the present value of of this Okay. Actually, do it. I'll come and see. So I don't. You know, the one challenge with three people shouting out is if the remaining forty people don't know what to do, that doesn't help us too much. Okay. So, okay. So, okay. So, just just pay attention again, and I want to check based on the questions you are asking. I want to clarify something. Okay. So, the way you do this is you simply take the present value of each one of these four what's the present value of 100, 100. yeah so this is simply 100 what's the present value of the next 100. so this would be 100 over 1.1 and this would be 100 divided by 1.1 squared and this would be 100 divided by 1.1 cube now this is a annuity due with four payments If I told you to create a timeline for a ordinary annuity with four payments, what would you do? So there would be times zero, one, two, three, and four. So now the payment would be at the end of year one, end of year two, end of year three, and end of year four. Now, without doing any calculations. how many people can tell me whether the present value of the ordinary annuity is greater or the present value of the annuity due is greater annuity. yeah the present value of the annuity due is greater because you are getting your money faster right so there is money is faster so the same amount of money so you know i sometimes make fun of accountants accountants just do plus minusing right so if you were an accountant you would say there is no difference right because an accountant would say 100 plus 100 plus 100 plus 100 is 400 100 plus 100 plus 100 plus 100 400 so an accountant would say that they are similar but you are one level higher now since you are doing finance okay so now that you do finance you recognize that what is better okay what is better the getting money sooner is better and that essentially goes back to our time value of money if somebody is two people are giving you the same amount of money where you are getting your money faster that is better because if you have your money sooner you can invest it and earn money on that okay so that is the difference between a ordinary annuity and a annuity due but 
what I want to highlight with this example is that in terms of finding the present value, the concept is the same. You take every cash flow and you figure out its present value. Knowing that on the left you have an annuity due simply allows you to plug the numbers on the right spot or in the right spot on your timeline. Okay, so that's that's all there is to it. Okay, now I'm not, as I said, a big fan of formulas, but let's say that you are asked, you are given a uh, annuity. So, for example, when I graduated from college, I had a student loan where I had to pay a hundred and thirty dollars per month for ten years. Okay, so if I, if let's say again, taking the interest rate. Let's take a uh, uh, okay. Let's just make this simple. So it is 130 per year for 10 years, just to make the problem simpler. Let's say again the interest rate is 10 percent. So finding the present value using the method I just described might become a little tedious if you are doing this on an exam. Okay, on your exam you don't have a let's say you don't have a financial calculator. You obviously don't have your your laptop. So uh, so you have to do this. Now, the, the way you would do this on in, in the artificial world of an exam is you would have to use a formula, assuming you have not invested in a financial calculator. So what's the present value of uh, annuity? The formula, which I think you've seen this before, right? It's payment divided by the interest rate multiplied by 1 minus a 1 plus i to the power of n okay so um, i normally don't remember this because i don't need to use it but on the exam you might need to use it so you need to remember this okay so this is the present value of a uh, annuity now let's just uh, let's just look at a problem that we solved earlier just to make sure this formula works so time 0, time 1, time 2, time 3. I think, uh, what was the problem I gave you? Did I give payments of 100? So I said 100, 100, 100 with the interest rate equals to 10%. So what's the payment? The What do I plug in for interest? Yeah, it's always a decimal that is plugged in. Into 1 minus 1 over 1.1 to the power of 3. So if you do this, you should get the same answer as discounting back the 3 cash flows and adding up the numbers. Okay. So, so are you getting that answer? Just do this very fast. Why, uh, why is this taking so long? So what's the answer here? Uh, two forty-eight point. Okay, okay. So that sounds right. Uh, why? Uh, if you just look at another another thing that I want you to <coughs> develop is when you get an answer, you should be able to tell whether this is about right or not. Okay. So very quickly, hundred discounted back at ten percent. Approximately, what is that? Up, uh, yeah, about ninety. Okay, the second hundred discounted back. Yeah, so this would be, if you discount back one period, it would be about 90 discount back. Just very roughly, this would come down to about 80. And very roughly, this would come to 70. So you have 70 plus 80 plus 90, which is approximately 250. So at least, at least, you know, your this seems appropriate. If you had an answer that was more than 300, clearly that would be wrong. Okay, so uh, whenever you get an answer, at least you can just say, okay, does this look sensible or not? I, I haven't done the calculation, but this looks sensible. Okay, so that's your annuity formula, at least while you are at IBA, and if you don't like using financial calculators, memorize this formula. I will probably not give this to you on the exam, so just learn it. Okay.
how do we do uh, how do we do the present value of this uneven cash flow so uh, will every anybody struggle with this so everybody should be able to do this you take every single cash flow and discount it can you use the annuity formula here no because they are it's uneven okay so this is easy it's done for you okay now solving for n if you are doing your basic calculation your boss tells you that our sales are growing at 20% per year in how many years will our sales double okay how will you do this how many people can do this so let me let me see how many people can actually come up with an answer so do it i'm going to make sure you know an exact way of doing this and then a quick rule of thumb for doing this this is actually maybe you can use some algebra here also if you want Oh, you're not so good for the other half. Okay, let's see. Okay, what's what's going on here? This effectively, when you talk, this is a simple application of compounding. When you say sales of a company are growing by 20 percent, what does that mean? Okay, so that means at time, if you just model this, yeah, think of the 20 percent interest rate. So initially, you are 100. how much will that become after one year 120 so effectively that is 100 into 1.2 after two years what will you have so 100 into 1.2 squared okay so after n years what will you have 100 into 1.2 to the power of n so what is being asked how long before the sales double if you started with 100 then then you want to know in how many years will it become 200 okay so i don't know how many of you know this but it's i think class 10 maths so 1.2 to the power of n becomes 200 over 100 which is 2 okay so if this is 1.2 to the power of n is equal to Two. Do you know how, how many people know how to solve this? Yeah, you take the you take the natural log of both sides. The natural log of 1.2 to the power of n becomes n. So n becomes the natural log of 2 over ln of 1.2. Now, I am assuming that at IBA you learned this level of maths. Yeah. All right. So, but by and large, this won't be that. critical on a financial calculator all you need to plug in is this initial value the final value plug in an interest rate of 10% and the calculator will give you an answer on a computer also you can just quickly run a model where you keep growing sales by 20% and just see how many years so there are many ways to do this problem what's the perpetuity what's the perpetuity your name what's the perpetuity not sure okay so uh, i'll pick way you get the same amount that's the annuity isn't it so what's the perpetuity yeah with perpetuity is you know i it's a perpetual payment okay so so for example if a uh, if if a rich uncle dies and says that every year you will get $1000 okay so he has a huge trust fund which keeps generating income and every year you get $1000 is that a perpetuity yes okay so how will that be modeled so 0 1 1 2 and then on and on and on so effectively we are saying that you are going to get $1000 for ever let's say that the relevant interest rate is 10% 
what's the present value of this? Yeah, so if you ask an accountant, he'll get very confused because he'll say, okay, so, you know, 1000 plus 1000 plus 1000 plus, where do I stop? Okay, but, but uh, a finance person will recognize that this has a finite present value. The present value of a perpetuity is equal to the payment divided by the interest rate. So the payment is 1000 divided by interest rate of 0 0.1, so 10,000. So if somebody gave you a choice that would you prefer dollars 11,000 today versus 1,000 every year forever? Okay, what would you prefer? You would prefer 11,000 today. Now, how would you explain to an accountant why 11,000 today is better? Because the accountant will say, look, you know, you're getting 1,000 every year forever and ever and ever. So you keep adding 1,000, you will just get a huge number. But you tell him, no, 11,000 is actually better. So what argument will you use? How can you convince him? Exactly. So what you will tell the accountant is, look, the interest rate is 10%. If you invest 11,000 today at at 10 percent how much will you get every year you so if you invest 11,000 today every as in today at a rate of 10 percent every year you will actually get how much you will get 1100 and even the accountant can figure out that 1100 is better than thousand all right so so this proves that that 11,000 today is better than uh, than then thousand every year forever and ever and ever all right okay so anyway bottom line is you need to know this formula the present value of a perpetuity is the payment divided by the interest rate okay another critical point here that will come up later in this perpetuity when is the first cash flow coming the first payment is coming at the end of year one okay and the present value is at at the end of year one or time zero? Time zero. Time zero. Yeah, so the critical point is the present value is here at time zero. So the present value at time zero is equal to the payment at time one divided by the interest rate. So now if I were to give you another problem that lots of people mess up on, okay which is that let's say that your rich uncle dies and he says that you get thousand per year every year forever and this starts at t equal to zero so it starts at time equal to st starts now okay so what's the present value at time zero of this is this a perpetuity yeah, it is a perpetuity. What's the present value of this perpetuity? Hmm? Why 12,000? Okay, so you add the 1,000 to what? What was the original? Okay. So, so now the cash flow is 1,000. 1,000 thousand etc 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 so interest rate is ten percent so how how do you calculate the PV yeah what we are saying is the PV of all these numbers which I have underlined you take the present value of these and you get what here you get ten thousand and then you add the thousand that you are getting right now at time zero so you add these two the present value is then eleven thousand Okay, so this is the present value. Uh, now you 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 need to realize that any cash flow you get, you must you must uh, be able to put it on a timeline, and then you must be able to understand what's the formula telling you. So the formula payment over interest rate, it's telling you the present value at time zero of payments that are starting from year one. Okay, this this is. 
uh, you know i can't emphasize this point enough because it keeps coming up and people keep messing it up so the sooner you get it the better what's a growing perpetuity have you seen this before okay so so take a wild guess based on the name yeah a growing perpetuity is a perpetuity that grows <laughs> okay so you need to specify a growth rate what's a classic example of a growing perpetuity if you have a company that pays a dividend let's say the dividend at the end of year 1 is 10 dollars and you make an assumption that the dividend will grow at the same rate as the gdp okay so the economy is growing at 4% so you assume also that the dividend will grow at 4% okay now what is the present value of a growing perpetuity the present value at time 0 and we don't need to get into the derivation you just need to know the formula it's the payment at time 1 divided by the interest rate minus the growth rate okay so in this particular case if the growth rate is uh, 10% and let's say the interest rate is also 10% then d1 will be will be 10 divided by the interest rate which is 0.1 minus the growth rate which is 0.0.0 Zero four. So, do you think a growing perpetuity, if we had, uh, if we, if we had, did not have this growth rate? So, if you had a regular perpetuity, where you are getting uh, at time one you are getting ten, time two you are getting ten. So, this is a regular perpetuity versus a growing perpetuity has what? So, there you have initially you have ten, then you have fourteen, and then you have larger numbers. so which will have a higher present value the perpetuity or the growing perpetuity <laughs> growing perpetuity because clearly you are getting more money so look at what the growing perpetuity will give you it will give you 10 divided by 0.06 so you will get a higher number if this were a regular perpetuity then the present value would be 10 over 0.1 which is Hundred. Okay. So anyway, we will conclude this here. What I want you to do is very quickly. We don't have, you know, uh, I want you to get this book and start doing the questions related to chapter one. Uh, this is chapter two. Time value of money. Yeah. <laughs>